Okay, in question six, um, you're given the mass spec and you're given the empirical formula and you're asked to confirm that the molecular formula is C6H12, okay? You can look at your mass spec and see that your molecular mass is 84, but it's not enough to just say that the formula mass of C6H12 is 84. You have to use the empirical formula, okay? So just working out, if you just did 12 times 6 plus 12 equals 84, you don't get the mark. That's you just showing that if you work out the formula mass of your molecular formula, the answer is 84. They want you to use the empirical formula. So what you have to do is you take your molecular mass, which is 84. I'm getting that from my mass spec. You have to divide that by the molecular mass of the empirical formula. So I've got CH2, that would be 12 plus two equals 14. 84 divided by 14 is 6, and then you have to take your empirical formula, CH2, and multiply that by 6, and you get C6H12. So you have to use the empirical formula when you're doing that calculation. The next part of the question, okay, um, they have told you that it's hex2-ene, so I've drawn hex2-ene out here in full, and they want possible structures for peaks 1 and 2. Okay, so if I start here at 84, to get to peak 2, which has a peak of 69, I have to lose 15. And if I'm losing 15, like I've seen before, I know I'm losing a CH3. So if I come down and have a look at my hex 2 in, I need to lose a CH3 from my molecule. There's actually two different ways I can do that. I can break this bond here and I'll lose a CH3, or I could break this bond here and I would lose a CH3, okay? I'm gonna assume that I've broken this first bond here, and that would leave me with a carbon, double bonded to a carbon, and dun, 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 okay? That would leave me with that, okay? Because it's a peak um, on a mass spec, I know that it must be caused by an ion, and I'm gonna put a positive charge next to that carbon. Okay, if you chose to break this bond, then you would draw out everything exactly the same and you have a positive charge here on this end of your molecule. Okay, for peak two, okay, this, sorry, for peak one, I've got a peak at 41. To get from 84 back to 41, I must be losing 43. So I'm losing 43. I've seen that number loads of times already today. If I'm losing 43, I'm losing a C3. H7, okay? So I'm coming back here. Oh, I've drawn these in the wrong boxes. Uh, I'm coming back here and I need to lose a C3H7. To do that, I am breaking this bond right here and I'm losing my C3H7. So if I do that, what am I left with? I'm left with this fragment here. And again, because it's giving me a peak, it must be an ion, and I'm going to put a positive charge. If you forget your positive charges, you are going to lose a mark. So I'm sorry, I've drawn these the wrong way around. So this is my peak two, and this is the peak one. Okay, make sure you are including your positive charges. Next, on to question number seven. Okay, I'm on question number seven now. It gives you the mass spectrum of an alcohol and it wants you to analyze the mass spec and give a structure for alcohol A. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look and find the molecular formula of my alcohol. So if I go up here to the highest peak, I see my peak is at 60, okay? Don't get confused with that whole M plus one peak. If they were drawing an M plus one peak here, it would be really, really small, okay? This is a significant peak at 60. This is your molecular ion peak, and it tells you the formula mass of your alcohol. So it's at 60, so I know the formula mass of my alcohol is 60, okay? I know because it's an alcohol that it must contain an OH, okay? So I'm starting with molecular mass of 60, and I'm taking away 17, because that's the mass of OH, and I see that I've got 43 left to play with, okay? We've seen this number 43 a good few times, okay? If you've got a formula mass of 43, then you have got three carbons and you have got seven hydrogens. So my likely structure of my alcohol is C3H7, okay? If you get the formula mass of C3H7OH, you'll see that's exactly 60. Now you may be asking, how did you know there was just one OH? What if it was a diol or a triol, okay? 
you can do it trial by error if you have time in the exam. Okay, if you wanted to make this a diol and just do two carbons and two OHs and then fill in the hydrogens, you will see that this does not give you a formula mass of 60. If you wanted to try just having one carbon and making it a triol, Okay, again, you'll see that it doesn't work out and you don't end up with a formula mass of 60. The only way to end up with a formula mass of 60 and have it as an alcohol is to have the molecular formula C3H7OH. Okay, this is my molecular formula, but I still need a structure. So there are two isomers of C3H7OH. I can draw it as just propan 1 all with the OH and carbon 1, or I can draw it as propan 2 all with the OH and carbon number 2. To figure out which one is which, I need to analyze my peak X. Peak X is at 31. In order for it to be at 31, I need to see what fragment could be giving me a peak at 31. So if it didn't contain the OH and it only contained carbons, the most carbons you could get in there would be two. You could have two carbons in there with a formula mass of 31, but that would leave you with seven hydrogens left over. And as we've already seen, C2H7 does not exist. There's not enough space around two carbons to fit in seven hydrogens. So I know that cannot be my fragment. My other option then is to include the OH in my fragment. Okay. And if I do that, I end up with a fragment of, sorry, C. CH2OH. Okay, so once I take away the 17, I'm left with 14. That gives me room for one carbon and two hydrogens or CH2OH. Okay, so this is going to be my fragment at X. So I now need to look at both of these structures and see which one uh, I have CH2OH in. If I look at my propan 1 all, I see if I break this bond right here, I'm left with a fragment that contains CH2OH. And this could give me a peak at X. If I look at my propan 2 all, there is no single bond that I can cut that will give me a fragment of CH2OH. So if I cut this bond here, I'm left with CH3CHOH, which is not the same fragment. So I'm not left with CH2OH. I have got four hydrogens and an OH there. So uh, it is not the right fragment. And there's no bond that you can break on propan 2 all that's going to give you that CH2OH fragment, which we need for a peak at 31. So your answer is going to be propan 1 all. Okay, in question eight, you're asked to determine the molecular formula of the compound. And this is important. You are asked for molecular formula, not just the empirical formula. So they give you this composition by mass. You should hopefully be familiar with this. You need to use this data to work out the empirical formula. So I take the percentage of each and I divide by the formula mass. So carbon is 70.58 divided by 12. I do that for each. I simplify this ratio by dividing by the smallest number, and I end up with a ratio of 4 to 4 to 1, which is C4H4O. This is your empirical formula. You need to work out the molecular formula. In order to work out the molecular formula, you're going to need to use your mass spec. So if you go here, you will see that your highest peak here is at 100 and 36. Now this mass spectrum is an example of where you have got your m plus one peak. So my molecular ion peak is here at 136 and there's a really small peak at 137 to represent um, the molecules that have carbon 13. But my molecular formula is 136. I now need to work, sorry, Sorry, my molecular mass is 136 and I need to work out my molecular formula. So to do that I need to get the formula mass of my empirical formula, C4H4O. And when I do that, I get four times 12 plus four plus 16 is 68. The formula mass of my empirical formula is 68. Then I take the formula mass of my molecular formula, divided by the formula mass of my empirical formula, I get an answer of two. And then I take my empirical formula and multiply it by two, and I get C8H8O2, and that is my molecular formula. So you work out the empirical formula, you get the formula mass of your empirical formula, you divide your molecular mass by the formula mass of your empirical formula, 
and then you multiply, okay? Um, I know that sounds like a long list of instructions, but it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it, okay? Just be careful when you're reading your value off your mass spec that you're taking the molecular ion peak and not the n plus one peak. The rest of question eight, you don't actually have to do. Uh, we haven't done this yet. We'll be doing this in year 13. It's actually a really, really good question. One that we will definitely be coming back to because it tests you on lots of different things. Um, but you don't have to do B or C yet.